Hi everyone, this is Imran Ahmed, founder and CEO of the Business of Fashion. We are back for another episode of BOF Live. Today, I'm going to have a chat with someone I really respect a lot, the photographer Alexei Lubomirsky. Alexei and I met a few years ago um, when I started following some of his work, and then he spoke at Voices our big event in um, Oxfordshire uh, last December. And ever since then, we've just enjoyed really chatting with each other in it because it's such a challenging time in the world. Um, I wanted to take the time to speak to him. So I'm just going to zoom him in for a second. Just hold on. There you go. Modern technology. Uh, How are you doing, Alexi? I'm all right. How are you doing? I'm okay. Um, strange times. It is. It is strange times. But I was thinking about you, and I thought, and I saw some of the stuff that you were posting on Instagram, and it just made me think it would be nice to connect with you at this time when there's all this stuff going on. Um, yeah, it's been definitely a time of uh, lots of reflection. I think. Yeah, exactly. There's been a lot of time for that. Are Are you in New York? I'm in the city. Yeah, um, I'm on my own because okay. my my family my family escaped the city. My my apartment got flooded two weeks ago, so I'm here rescuing it. Oh no! Because the virus is just too too simple to have by itself. I had to add a flood to it. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my dear. Well, I hope everything's okay. Yeah, no, no, but it's been it's been good in the sense of uh, a lot of time to think and to um, to really sort of try and reflect on what's going on. And uh, I, you mentioned like stuff I've been putting out on my on my Instagram. I think it's really a it's been a very interesting time to watch people's reaction to this and how they how they adapt to what's going on. And I think that I mentioned in a couple of my posts that I think we're all going through a lot of a lot of forced self-reflection, you know, in between the the Netflix and the looking after kids and homeschooling and lots sort of stuff. I think that um, you know this is a massive, massive historical event, um, and a very sensitive line between you know millions of people losing their livelihoods. Um, and then the other side of things where people are just sort of, you know, holed up in their house and uh, sort of just trying to flatten the curve and stay in and not see anybody. Um, and I think that uh, throughout my thoughts, I think it's come to sort of, obviously during all this self-reflection time is a moment for us to process everything that's going on, not just at the yeah. moment, but also process our lives, I think, you know, really sort of just take a moment to, to, to look at what we've done and who we are as people and who we are as an industry. Because um, I think that we tend to rush around life at a million miles an hour. You know, we wake up, we have a shower, we go on Instagram, we eat breakfast, we get a coffee, we get our emails, texts, et cetera, et cetera. And throughout the day, there are those moments where you suddenly say, you know, you have these thoughts of, God, I wish I could just stop for one second and take stock of everything. And you know, because I go to work all the, and I just do what I'm told at work and we, we create and we create and we create to, 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 to uh, produce more and more and more, to sell more and more and more. And I'm sure that everybody in the industry feels this sort of sense of, I know everybody in the industry has a good heart, but we're all part of this. We all believe we're part of this machine. And I think that we all at the back of our brains think, oh, wouldn't it be great to just pause for a second and just try and realign some stuff and and regroup a bit. And I think that we've been given this amazing opportunity to to do that, not only in a business life, but also in a personal life. Um, And I think that as I was trying to sort of figure out what I was, how I felt about it all, I think that my thoughts to do with personal life and the business life combined as one, you know, it's it's a very similar thing. And I think during this time, it's definitely about being grateful, grateful, grateful for everything you have. Because, you know, like I said, you know, all these millions of people who are losing their 
their livelihoods. And if you are lucky enough to be sat at home, surrounded by loved ones, with food on the table, clothes on your back, a roof over your head, then you are blessed. Uh, despite the fact that you can't find anything to watch on Netflix anymore because it's been two weeks. Um, and so I think when you realize your blessings, then you have to share those. So I think the first thing that you know, we all should be doing is sort of reaching into our pockets and extending a hand remotely, if you can't do it physically, to our brothers and sisters who are you know, losing their jobs, losing their livelihoods, uh, the, 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 uh, the medical population. Um, there's a great uh, um, catering company in London called Canteen, or Canteen, C-A-N-T-I-N-E, and they, uh, friends of mine, they do all the um, catering for all the productions in the UK. And right now they are, apart from taking orders from people, they are providing food for all the NHS workers coming out after their shifts because there's no food left on the shelves anymore when they come out. And so they're providing these soups and, uh, and curries and they're doing an amazing job. And I think it's stuff like that, that we really all need to start to start doing either physically or remotely. And I think even if you, you know, you can only afford to give $2 a month or something like that, then that's what you do. And that's, a, that's, a, that's something. Or if you can afford to yeah. give $1,000 a month, that's also great. Yeah. But uh, I think it's really a, it's, um, trying to sort of delve into that to think about how are we going to uh, improve ourselves. Yeah. So what have you decided your channel is to give back? I mean, you don't run a catering company like Canteen. Have you figured out an avenue, Alexi? Uh, at, at the moment, my avenue is, and it's a really good question because you suddenly think to yourself, what, what purpose do I have? <laughs> what is my purpose in this whole thing? Yeah. And I think that... Anybody who, ha anybody who has a platform, and we all have platforms nowadays, um, I guess it's, it was trying to sort of use my platform to try and inspire people during this time, whether it's through imagery or, or thoughts or whatever it is. Um, and if people find any comfort or, or help in that, then fantastic. If they don't, they can just swipe past me very quickly. Um, but I think it's... Apart from that, it's just money. I mean, every every time I see people who are um, charities who are helping, there are so many charity, charities popping up in different communities uh, trying to reach out and help people, you know, people who can't get groceries, he, people who've lost their jobs. Uh, and it's really about sort of setting up as many monthly donations as possible for me um, because taking photos at this time doesn't really help the, the, the common good. So. Yeah. You know, we've been doing some... Um, work on on the site to understand how all of this is impacting freelancers. I mean, clearly, like the people who's who are really suffering are the people who've fallen ill and they're in hospital and like. Um, but as you point out, there's another layer of people who've been impacted, which are people um, who don't have a livelihood anymore because every you know people are either losing their jobs or if you're a freelancer, you have no job security at all right so a lot of the people i know who freelance all of their projects have been canceled i mean what's what's what have you been hearing about what's going on and like what do you think freelancers should be doing in this period to kind of not just survive but also continue to be creative you know because it's, it's can be really frustrating and yeah. you know people don't feel like they have an outlet anymore right I mean, I think that, yeah, I have had so many layoffs uh, in the industry. And um, I think that in terms of creative, maintaining creativity, it's much like if you're a freelancer, you know what time off feels like because you're not getting hired every day. You know, there are, there are moments of working every day and then other moments of just nothing for a month or two. And it's really applying the same, it's the same, uh, the same ideas, which is, to constantly feed yourself, um, whether that's through research or, or just being creative in other avenues. I think don't, don't um, one of the greatest gifts I gave myself is to realize that if I was inspired by something, I always used to think, so looking at a picture of you now, and I think, oh, the light on him is amazing. It inspires me to do something, it inspires me something, so emotionally somehow. Yeah. And I used to think to myself, 
how do I apply that to a photog to, to photography? And it wasn't until maybe five, six years ago that I realized why am I trying to sort of pigeonhole myself into my job title? If you're a creative person, creativity can come out in any medium. So I started writing, I started writing poetry, I started writing prose, I started doing other bits and bobs. And sometimes that can feed everything else. You know, so the more I wrote about stuff, that would feed ideas into my photography. And it's just really sort of rather than me just saying, I'm a photographer, I have to be inspired by something and then turn it into a photograph. So it's really a sort of a question of just, I, I think this moment of self-reflection is so powerful for creatives. Because just to, as I said before, we rush around life and we don't have a moment to process any of our emotions. You know, usually when you, yeah. in the old days before, before cell phones, if you had a funny dream that made you feel something, you woke up with a certain emotion, you would sit with that emotion for a while. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, we wake up and grab our phone, Twitter feed, et cetera, et cetera. We don't have a moment to process. And I think that when you're a creative person, learning to process your thoughts and your emotions is such a powerful tool because it can come, it can feed your ideas. And normally I wake up at uh, two hours before the kids wake up. Okay. Because I know that I have, to, I have to have two hours where it's just me by myself doing my exercises, my meditation, yeah. my, my whatever it is, my rounding, breathing exercises. And those two hours are my ideas factory time. Because while I'm meditating or whatever I'm doing, there's no sounds, there's nobody calling, there's no ping, ping, ping of my phone. And I just start writing down ideas that pop into my head. Mm -hmm. And I tell people when they, when they ask me, how do you stay creative? <laughs> or how does one stay creative? It's that, it's allowing yourself silence to just sit and let all the crazy thoughts you've been thinking about all day long, process them and then release them. And when you release stuff from there, then you allow other stuff to fall in from the creative ether or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. It's been interesting, like just trying to figure out how to channel that, like, that creative energy into ways also that, you know, somehow contribute to the conversation and that kind of this kind of reflection moment of collective reflection that everyone's having um yeah. so so tell me i mean i saw that post that you did on you know the way you're now thinking about social media because a lot of people are, are saying look they don't understand or they're they're not comfortable with social media right now because you know looking back at some of our old posts we might feel they all feel so s superficial and and kind of vapid now in light of what's happening so in this context since you've been thinking about it like what 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 have you been thinking about with, with regards to the way you use your own social media channels i mean i i made a, a decision a couple of weeks ago just to only to, to sort of switch it up from, because I think that, as you said, when there's so much chaos going on, you don't really want to be posting about your latest, the latest fashion item, you know? Um, and it's really, but I don't, I don't think that social media can necessarily, necessarily has to be ignored as, as much as it just needs to be twisted, uh, uh, tweaked a bit. Yeah. And I think that we, we can allow ourselves to start using it to feed or to, to, um, to spread hope, love, positive vibes, whatever you want to call it, however you want to phrase yeah. it. And so I sort of d divided my social media up into three sections where I've always had a thank you list up on my mirror where I brush my teeth. And it's, uh, so whenever I brush my teeth, I just go down my thank you list and I say everything I'm thank you for. And um, the list is going longer and longer. The more you start to think about what exactly you're grateful for, you know, you start to think of your fingers so you can pick up things, your your lungs so you can breathe, your the, the rain, everything. And you start to get this huge list, which now means I have exceptionally white teeth because it takes me so long to go down this <laughs> list. <laughs> um, but um, so I started to post one of these thank yous every day because I think it's so important during this time, people get anxious, people get cooped up and they don't know what to do and they're going crazy. And as I said before, it's very important we realize our, our blessings. Yeah. Uh, then I released a book this year with my sons uh, called Thank You For My Dreams. It's a kid's book on gratitude. And so I post, it, I post one page from that a day so that parents can remind their kids what to be grateful for when they're complaining about being indoors all day. 
And then the third one was imagery. So I realized I'm a photographer and that's my, that's my language. So I decided to try and find images that were less about selling something and more about gave, gave an emotion of that thing we described before, which is hope and positivity and love and just give some nice emotion. And hopefully, listen, if people, if it vibes with people, it's been, it's been very, it's been the, the most commented stuff on my Instagram this, this last couple of weeks. And I think maybe because people need that at the moment. Um, but uh, it's been, it's been nice to read the feedback. Have you been taking any photographs at all or has that just completely stopped? Um, I think I must've taken some photographs. Yeah. But it's usually, I mean, again, it's, it's, like I look out the window in New York and Blossom is, is on the trees. And you think, wow, this is a beautiful moment. And also, you, I think it's also your senses are opened up when this happens. Like I was on, standing on top of the building, uh, our building the other day. And it was five o'clock in the afternoon in New York downtown. And you could hear a, a church bell eight blocks away. I could hear birds singing all over the place. There was not a car to be heard. I felt like if you shut your eyes, you're in a village in the middle of the countryside. And it was, it's really, um, and then also you don't see any, uh, there's no planes in the sky. There's no zigzagging of these plane trails. So it's really, um, yeah, I've been writing a lot. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> yeah. What have you been writing about? Uh, the feelings, self-reflection, poetry, um, about what's going on at the moment. I think that, uh, as I said, when you, when you get into this moment of self-reflection, you start thinking about what your life is at the moment because you take more than five seconds to actually think about it, you, you start to reflect on things you have done, things you want to do, things you wish you hadn't done, or things you wish to do. And I think that, as I said before, on a personal basis and as an industry basis, this is a fantastic time because we can use this, this forced pause to realign, reprocess, rethink, and reimagine what we want to be when we exit this thing. And I think that, uh, you know, on a personal level, you can, you can decide, do I, am I happy with what I'm doing in my life? You know, I've been going at 100 miles an hour up until now, and now I've stopped. Do I want to continue going 100 miles an hour, or do I want to be doing something different? Or do, do I want to do something with more meaning? And I think also from an industry point of view, hopefully, I mean, you've been talking about a lot uh, on your um, on your site is like, what is the fashion industry going to do after this? You know, is it going to hopefully change for the better? Can it take a moment? Because everybody has to stop. It's not like beforehand, nobody, nobody wants to stop because they might think if I stop and pause and rethink my strategy, then that allows my competitors to speed ahead. So now everybody's on the same field. We've all had to stop. So can the industry come back and say, after this much needed pause, we've decided to move forward in a more ethical or conscious way and change, change the format. Yeah. Um, and hopefully we can. I mean, I'm hoping that we don't just go back to the same old thing again. It would be such a, such a huge waste of this. Alexi, people, people want you to move a bit to your left because there's so many comments they can't see your face. There. Left a bit. Yeah, that way. Yeah, exactly. There we go. Uh, yeah. That's too good. far. That's too <laughs> far. Um, so do you have any thoughts on that, Alexi, about like, what do you think? What do you think the fashion industry might be able to learn from this moment? My hope is that because I imagine the fashion industry is going to be in pieces a bit. And my hope is that they can take these pieces and remold into a much more conscious future, not only for the planet and for the general, the greater good, but also to align themselves with the public. As I said before, many millions of people are now sitting at home and they're reassessing their lives. Yeah. And they might think to themselves, maybe they're going to look, you know, they're going to sort of improve their lives on a more ethical, spiritual nature, who knows? And they might, end, they might exit this whole time with a new set of values or slightly shifted set of values. Yeah. And I think it's important, just as important for the big, um, big companies in the industry to realize that and be able to reflect the changing values of the people of their customers. Yeah. 
I think that there's going to be a massive opportunity um, to rethink the fashion industry. Right now, it just feels like people are trying to survive. You know, people are trying to make it through, yeah. and um, there'll be there'll be plenty of opportunity, I guess, for that ind the industry to reflect. I just hope that we take the moment to do that. You know, that we use this opportunity when we come out of all of this. Um, yeah. What what do you think might happen to fashion magazines? I don't know. I mean, I, I've had so many conversations about this, and I don't know. It's a really it's a scary thought because magazines have been in my life since I was a kid. You know, yeah. reading my mum's magazines, and you know, magazines were already going through a tough time, and a lot of people have said, "Is this going to be the the nail?" in the coffin. Yeah. Um, but then maybe out of that, maybe some magazines will disappear. Others will survive. Maybe new magazines will appear after this yeah. and it'll allow some sort of re shake up of the whole, of the whole idea. I think this gives it an amazing opportunity to rethink everything and just sort of come at it from a different angle. Um, so be, I, I'm fascinated. I mean, this whole thing is fascinating for me. I think this whole, Everything that's happening is such a crazy, crazy time. And I don't think any of us have ever been through this in our life. And I don't, we might not go through it again. So to see what happens after this is going to be monumental. Yeah. And also our thoughts and, you know, our energy also has to be with all the people who are in hospital, because I think there's been this um, slight fallacy that this is only an illness that you know, touches older people, but you know, everything that I'm learning about the disease is actually lots of young people, including people in our own industry, you know, are, are really, you know, not well. So yeah. um, there's, you know, there's on top of everything else, that's the core thing that I, th I think we can't forget. There's like a, there's a deeper thing happening here that's about, you know, the public health system. And, you know, we are fortunate to be living in Western countries where they're equipped to deal with all of this. And, you know, there's debates going on about how well they're dealing with it, but at least they're trying to deal with it. You know, and if you talk to people in, in developing countries like Brazil or India or Indonesia, like things are even more challenging there because, you know, as you know, people are literally living hand to mouth and now everything's shut yeah. down, you know, and, um, it frightens me to think about what happens in those places if this really begins to spread in those um, in those countries which don't have strong public health systems. Right. No, I mean that that's the scary thing. And I was talking. I'm an ambassador for a humanitarian charity called Concern Worldwide, and they were saying they're dreading this moment where it's really starts to affect those countries they're working in because, as you said, the healthcare system. Is not uh, and also refugees and those huge camps, and it's going to be a massive thing. But I think this is again is it all comes down to connection. You know, beforehand you were talking about people in our industry who it's affected, and it's been fascinating to see how and heartwarming to see how people have connected. You know, you get these texts from people who you haven't heard from for years saying, "Just checking in, how are you doing?" And in New York, you know, you go down the street, people don't know their neighbors in New York because it's a bunch of flats about a bunch of apartments and all of a sudden you're saying everything, anything you need, just give me a shout. And, and I think it's the same. We have to sort of expand that idea to on a much more global basis. Yeah. And realize we are all connected. And this is not about this. The amazing thing about this virus is that it's not another nation that we're fighting against. It's this thing that is nothing to do with, I mean, nothing of human form and it is attacking all of us. Yeah. And I think that connects us. And I think we have to use that connection, that realization that we're connected in, in the way we help each other. Yeah, no, exactly. So we're almost out of time, but do you have any, there's so many people online watching this. Do you have any advice for young creatives who are trying to navigate um, this situation? Maybe they're much earlier on in their careers and they're trying to figure out, you know, what to do? 
<laughs> Big question. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I think, as I said before, they've just got to make sure they stay creative, but stay creative in every aspect. Don't, if you're a photographer, don't just be a photographer. You know, write, paint, draw, whatever it is you do. Cook, sing, write songs. Um, and I think that in my career, I've been through a couple of downturns in the economy. Yeah. And during those times, when you're a freelancer, you are always going to have downtime. You know, whether you like it or not, you yeah. have moments of plenty and moments of nothing. Yeah. And I think that you, you are always going to have to practice this idea of what are you going to do during those times of down. Um, but I think that out of, and again, out of these horrible scenarios uh, and difficult situations comes opportunity. Things get shaken up. You know, sometimes the, the old stuff is pushed away without you know us trying and it leaves room for new stuff to come in so um the only thing i would say is stay original make sure your personal voice stands out in your work because i always say to people when they have portfolios don't just show copies of other people's work i mean which is what i did when i first started i would show portfolio and it was uh a cheap copy of a studio photographer, a cheap copy of a location photographer, and a cheap copy of a celebrity photographer. And there was nothing of me in there until one day I went to a, um, a, a portfolio showing to a creative director, and I happened to have in the back of my portfolio some photos of the personal project that I was working on. Yeah. And he, and he flipped through my portfolio at a million miles an hour as usual, and then he was like, oh, what is this? And I started to tell him it was all about film stills because I was a film maniac and a TV addict as a kid. And we talked about that for an hour. And I got my first fragrance job because of that. Yeah. He said, he said I knew you could take pictures because I can see you're doing all this other stuff, but it's not you. Yeah. This, I can see, this, I can see your sensibility. Yeah. So I always say to people, make sure you show your, your own personal you know, sensibility in your work. Yeah. I think having your own creative voice and being able to find that voice that's when the magic really happens, right? That's when, when, you're, when you're singing from something that you've developed that generally speaking from who you are, as opposed to worrying about trying to be cool or trying to live up to other people's expectations or trying to fit into something else, you need to find your own voice. And that's- that really difficult. Yeah, that's, I mean, that take, that's hard work, right? That's- yeah. And, and other, often you don't find it until somebody else points it out to you. Yeah. And the other thing that, you know, I've been telling people on our team that haven't been through one of these situations before is that when you're in the thick of it, it feels like the end of the world. But we always get through these things and we yeah. learn from them and, and they pass. And so this particular moment is something that people around the world are feeling collectively together and it's all being amplified on the news with this like 24-hour news cycle and we have social media and messaging services and things where people are just like spreading so much information yeah so it, it, it feels it feels overwhelming at times but it, it will pass you know we will get through it um, yeah, I think that I think that if you're another thing to creatives is watch the news once a day. Yeah, not 24 hours a day. Yeah, yeah. I've started only watching the news at 10 p.m. just the evening news to find out what happened that day. But I don't like. I just don't. The first few days, I felt like I was constantly trying to figure out what was going on, and it's just when it when things are changing so quickly. And, you know, like and just one thing after another keeps happening can be really can really dis be disheartening. You need yeah. to know what's going on, but you don't need to be on it 24 seven, you know. Well, that's the other scary thing is this. I feel like we're in a free fall at the moment and we haven't landed yet. Yeah. And once you once we've stopped, then we can assess the damage. But right now it's we're just we haven't we, we're still falling. Yeah. Well. Hopefully the fall isn't that much further to go. Um, I'm grateful for your time, Alexi. I'm sorry that you're away from your family. I hope the flood situation gets sorted. 
Thank you very much. Are you going to reunite with them soon? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, okay. I see them. I see them for a day at the weekend just to catch up. So. Okay. Well, I hope but, I hope they're well. I hope you're well. Please keep in like touch with me. Um, stay yeah. healthy. Stay safe. And you, and you, stay clean. Stay clean and stay creative. I look forward to talking to you later about what what new creative outlet is born from this experience. No, it'll be interesting. All right. All right, thanks All a right. lot. Take care, Alexi. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, everyone, that was our latest BUF Live event um, with Alexi Lubomirsky. We have a lot more events coming later this week. Um, if you want to check them out, you can go to the BOF website and click on live events on the nav bar. And you can see all the list of all the different events that we'll be doing this week. Um, hopefully, um, you'll have a chance to join us again. And I hope you're all safe wherever you are. And um, yeah, we'll see you more often later this week. Take care. Bye.